Good morning. Welcome to Check It Out with Rich. Um, I have been wanting to get a new TPMS system for the camper. Um, I had the Lippert um, Tire Link, I think it's called. I really didn't like it. I got a real good deal on it. Um, uh, one thing I didn't like, I didn't have the flow through sensors. And my biggest dislike was you had to use your phone. So either your phone would go to sleep or you'd have to stop it from going to sleep and keep your phone plugged in while you're driving. Um, for another additional $80 or something like that, you can buy a module to put in your truck that will sound an alarm to let you know there's a problem. Then you have to look on your phone to see what the problem is. So anyway, we were at the uh, Hershey RV show and Becky gave me the okay to uh, upgrade a little bit. And this is what we got. We got the TST 770. I went with the 770 over the 507 for a couple reasons. Uh, one, it's a bigger screen naturally. Um, two, I did get the flow through sensors, which you can get that with the 507. But uh, another thing was the monitor is magnetically attached to the base. So you can just take it off and throw it in your glove box or your console if you want. Uh, the other nice thing I liked um, when that monitor is fully charged it'll last 12 hours so you don't have to have a cord coming down to uh, have it plugged in all the time so uh when i bought this they set it up for me at the show i came back to the camper i put the sensors on and it's working good so let's uh go through and see what all came in the box now the sensors are on a camp the camper so i'll put a picture in here now to show you them Okay, here's your monitor. On the side, there is an on and off switch. So it should be turning, there we go. And there is also a USB-C port for charging. Other than that, that is the only thing here. Okay, you also came with a um, repeater, uh, I think they call it, I'm not sure. Let me see here. Yeah repeater so i'm going to hook this up and then once i get this hooked up we'll go through how to set everything up so far this has been working without me uh having to have this hooked up but i, I still want to get it on there came with a warranty card came with a usb a to usb c uh charging cable which is nice you're not taking up a cigarette lighter you can plug this into just any uh usb port it came with two stainless steel wrenches, which are pretty nice. These are a lot nicer than the Lippert ones. I actually broke the one from Lippert. And it came with some 3M Velcro to mount the repeater. You can use screws or the 3M Velcro. Came with a sticker. Came with an extra set of uh, O-rings. It came with a cigarette adapter that has a one USB-A port on it. And two screws for the repeater. Brief directions. Now, I've do I downloaded the manual on this. I think it's 40 pages or something like that. I really haven't looked at it. I just skimmed through. And it also came with, see if you can see this. It came with these stickers. So what he did when he programmed the sensors, he put, you know, the, this will be your driver's side. So he put a uh, T2 on the front driver, T3 on the passenger front, T4, no, T6, T6 on a rear driver and T7 on a rear passenger, which made it pretty easy. When I got back, I just put them on and, uh, had I bought more sensors for the truck, uh, your vehicle is here. So he would have done the same thing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, repeater hooked up. Then when I'm done with this, we'll come back and we'll do, I'll, I'll go through the steps on how to um, connect the sensor. And then we'll go through any other options that are on a monitor. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, I got the repeater uh, installed. It was pretty easy. Just two wires and two screws. Um, 
when I hook the power up, the red light come on and it would blink a couple times here and there. And I looked in the manual. There is no setup required for the sensors. It's uh, plug and play. And now it did say that when you have your monitor on, it may flash occasionally. I had it on for a little bit. It flashed once. So, all right, let's go check out the monitor. Okay, let's get this thing powered up. Now, it takes a couple minutes to uh, for it to read all the tires. Um, I think the one time, it took almost 15 minutes to come in. I'm actually going to send them an email to find out why it's taking so long. But uh, we'll just wait till they all start reading. Okay, it's reading all the sensors now. Um, this morning I had called TST. I had a question for them. And I just got their answering service, so I just hung up. Well, while I was waiting for the monitor to read all the sensors, my phone rings. It's them. They seen that I had called, didn't leave a message, and he called back to see if I had an issue, which I think is excellent customer service. Um, the one of the questions I had for them was there's a button on a repeater. I pushed it. It didn't do anything. I looked at the owner's manual. It said nothing about it. Well, he said that is for the commercial industry. It has nothing to do with uh, RVs. And my other question was, he says it takes a couple few minutes for all the sensors to read. Uh, there's been times it's taken upward of 10 to 15 minutes. And he said that's that's perfectly normal. There are RF frequencies, so there's a lot of uh, wavelengths floating around here. So if it's any more than 15, he said, then you might have a low battery or something. All right, so let's get with the uh, settings here. Okay, like I said before, there's your on and off button. Here's your USB-C charging port. You have a battery indicator up here, which tells what the life of the battery in the monitor is. Like I said, he said it'll last um, 12 hours. Okay, over here you have two different screens. Um, this compass is actually pretty uh, accurate, but you have your time, date, you have a trip, and then it also tells you how fast you're going, which I, I tested out. It's uh, pretty accurate. And your altitude, uh, I'm about 1050 here, so it's, uh, it's off about 100 foot, but that's really not important. Okay, let's go back to the main screen. And you'll see it'll flash. So right now the passenger side front is flashing and you have 72 degrees, 106. And this one is saying that it's for trailer number one. You can do up to five trailers, which we'll see in a minute. So let's go to settings. And the first thing you have to do when you first set this up is you have to enter. So we'll do... Okay, you have to enter your cold pressure, which this is set at 100. And then exit. And then if you were setting it, you'd exit and save. We're going to exit without saving. And then let's go back there. Now here's the trailers. You can have up to five different trailers on this one monitor, which I think is pretty nice. And you can also have your truck hooked, your vehicle hooked up to it also. All right, so once you get your cold pressure setting, then you want to do automatic code learning. So we're on trailer one. So you would pick the tire that you want. Come on. There we go. Okay, you will have your sensor in hand and hit learn. And then it'll come up, it'll stop flashing. And then what you can do is you can take your uh, sticker, so we did uh, passenger front, you can take that sticker off and put on there, so when you get them all programmed, you know which one goes where, so you don't mix them up. I, I really like this, that's a good idea. Okay, and you can also delete that sensor from the device also. All right, let's go back to settings, and then we'll go to here, and this is, you can either go from, uh, PSI to bar to Fahrenheit Celsius. Uh, your maximum high temperature is set at 
158 and then you can do speed miles kilometers your clock 12 24 and altitude feet or meters okay exit without saving go back and then swap the location I don't know why you would do that oh uh, you know what if you had a sensor on your spare tire and you got a flat you can probably do it like that okay let's get out of here and then manual code input if you wanted to you there's a code on each sensor you can click on it click on it there you go so that is the code on my sensor on this tire and you can also delete that from the system also okay connect and disconnect okay the connect disconnect is just what it sounds like I can disconnect that from the uh, system and then here we go two there's nothing on two so let's go back and then we'll switch screens okay vehicle ID you can I named it f350 but you can you can name them um, let's see driller one named it uh, 32 R LSB and then you can do the same to each one date and time that's where you get your uh, your time zone so we're Eastern Standard okay I wish I went back to the menu okay sensor battery voltage so if we go to one see what this is reading okay we're at 30 volts 30 volts 30 volts 30 volts always good go back to here reset we don't want to do that right now about that's just your hardware software versions okay let's go back to the uh, cold tire setting okay now we go to t1 okay now what what you could do is you can go into manually change your high and low your max and min on your tire pressure um, this does it automatically at minus 10 percent or plus 25 percent it'll throw out an alarm okay and then the other thing is on the back I don't know how well you can see this okay right in here that's your magnet that goes on to the amount okay that's about it okay I am just blown away by that phone call what company sees you called and then calls you back to see what the issue is I mean it's I've never had that happen I mean it's that's really that's that's good customer service Okay, I actually called him back. I want to know about the cold tire pressure setting. If you can change that after you already have your uh, sensors um, downloaded on here. He said, yeah, he said, you, you can change that at any time. It's not going to affect the sensors at all. And um, he also said you can change your 10% min, 25% max to whatever your want to run it at if um, it's super hot out and your tires are getting up to 130 degrees go ahead and change it and then you won't have alarms going off left and right um, as far as my dislikes uh, right now I don't have any um, my likes uh, that phone call man that's just unbelievable um, and I'm really blown away that they called me back after seeing that I had called them and uh, so far I'm liking everything I you know, I forgot to mention it, but you seen why I was uh, doing the monitor that it is touchscreen, which makes it a lot nicer. Uh, the 507 isn't touchscreen. Um, the magnetic back on it, you can take it off, throw it in your uh, console, throw it in your camper. You don't have to worry about it being stolen. The other one um, is a suction cup, I believe. So you have to take the whole su suction cup with the monitor and uh, we all know how those suction cups work they end up falling after no time at all we haven't used it at, at nighttime yet 
Now it does have a little sensor here, UV sensor or something that I guess dims it down at night, but it might be nice having a, a means of dimming the screen if you wanted to. But other than that, um, would I recommend this after that phone call? Yes, most definitely. Um, I'm liking what I've been seeing here since we've been using it twice. Uh, we'll be using it again, again in a couple weeks. But uh, I'm really liking what I'm seeing and that, that phone call just blew me away. I will put uh, links in the description for everything. Uh, I bought this through uh, Techno RV, so I will put Techno's uh, link in there plus TST's. So, alright, hopefully this helps somebody out and once again, Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you all next time. Bye.